Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So I've installed, reviewed, and tested lots of different electronic gear and gadgets over almost 10 years of full-time RVing. Some stuff worked out better than others, and some were just toys. To help out new RVers, I decided to go through all my RV electronics and come up with a list of what I feel have been the 12 must-haves. I didn't start my RVing adventures with many of these items, but I've acquired them over the years and now would not want to part with them. Basically, I would want to replace these things if, God forbid, our fifth wheel was stolen, burned, or maybe a total write-off. So let's start. Rear view cameras. I went for several years RVing without a rear view backup camera, but now I wonder how I ever did without it. With my wife Anne as a spotter, I really need to back up, I really need it to back up the rig, but it's not really how I use it. For me, the killer application is using it as a rear observation camera. Knowing what's behind you in the large RV blind spot is golden. I've reviewed several different systems over the last few years and have found the Halo View to be among the best quality for display and wireless connection. Recently I've installed their Deluxe 4 camera system with easy to install rear view, side views and port security cameras. It also came with a rear view mirror display mount perfect for my use case. RV GPS. Next on my list is my Garmin RV760 GPS. It's now an older model, but it came with lifetime map updates, so it's still viable. Of course, there are reams of phone apps out there that do an excellent job of navigation. I use Google Maps as a backup. However, I prefer the dedicated RV GPS with the large 7-inch display, non-reflective matte finish, and RV-specific trip routing. I've also added many custom points of interest, such as the Allstays Pro database of RV-related stops and camping sites. Another perk to the Garmin GPS is it doesn't require an in internet connection to work. Uh, dash cam. A dash cam is useful for all vehicles, but I think it's a must have for us RV travelers. If involved in an accident, we are bound to be away from home and maybe even another country. The video proof can therefore become extremely valuable, saving a lot of time and headaches. I've tried many dash cams over the years, and so far I've found the best value in the Acaso Trace 1 Pro. Other than a bit of flakiness picking up the GPS satellites, it's worked perfectly for me. I often use its footage, in fact, in my YouTube travel videos. As a side note, my Haloview rear camera system also records footage as, footage as I drive, so we are covered on the front sides and back of the rig if need evidence of an in incident on the road. Security cameras. Keeping up with the camera theme, I now have three security cameras set up when we are camped. For the last year and a half, I've had a pair of cameras monitoring the campsite. First is the Real Link Go featuring its own cellular connection. So anywhere I have cell service, I can get motion alerts and live views on my smartphone. Next is the Halo View porch camera that I mentioned to get a close-up recording of anybody coming up to the camper door. Finally, I have a window camera inside the RV called the Homehawk Window from Panasonic. I installed it last summer and it has quickly become my favorite of the three. I have it pointed out the back of the trailer to catch all the goings on. The Homehawk is set to record footage 24-7, so often I take its recordings and put together cool time-lapse videos. So far we haven't had any problems with theft around the RV. I'm not saying it's all because of the cameras, but I'm sure they must help a bit to dissuade a would-be theft. They do give me a little more peace of mind when out boondocking or camping in a sketching area of town. EMS Surge Protection Early on, after hearing stories of people's RV electric circuits suffering significant damage due to miswired campground pedestals, surges, or low-voltage brownouts, I picked myself up a surge protector. As an electronic repair tech, I spent many years fixing items damaged by electric company overvoltage mistakes or lightning strikes, so it doesn't take much to convince me they're a worthwhile investment. Sure, the insurance company may pay for damages, but waiting around for a repair shop to source and replace multiple damaged RV appliances, fixtures, and wiring would be a total pain, especially for a full-timer like me. We all know how backlogged RV service centers are these days. In 2012, I researched and learned that all so-called RV surge protectors aren't created equal. You get what you pay for. Most cheaper sub-$100 units only protect against voltage spikes and maybe a miswired pedestal. The ones you want are usually called electrical management systems, EMS. 
they monitor the incoming voltage and shut off the RV if it's too low or too high or if a failure occurs in the incoming power wiring. They'll also turn, turn it back on when safe and have a time delay to prevent damage to the RV air conditioner. At the time, I chose a Progressive Industries EMS and hardwired into a, my fifth wheel trailer. It's now over eight years later and it's working fine. Recently, I've heard good things from a new surge protector from Hughes Industries, a big name for years in RV voltage boosters called Autoformers. Battery Management System. The EMS takes care of the AC shore power systems, but what about the DC power? If you do any dry camping, a quality battery monitor system is a must have. It's like a fuel gauge for your battery bank. Looking at the voltage reading of a battery, it's just a guesstimate of the power left in it and often entirely wrong. To get an accurate reading using voltage, one must disconnect the battery and let it sit for several hours. But who does this while RVing? This makes the battery monitor dummy lights installed on most RVs useless. The top two battery monitors on the market are the Bogart Engineering Trimetric and the Victron. I have the Trimetric installed as it works well in companion with Bogart's own solar controller. Though not as modern looking as the Victron, it's well built, made in the USA product and has worked great over the years. Having said that, I've talked to many boondoctors who absolutely love the Victron and its sleek looking Bluetooth phone app. There are also many there are also many much cheaper battery monitors from Chinese companies, but results may be hit and miss. Check out the reviews closely if you're looking to save a buck. Weather station. I admit it's not a must-have for many, but I love having one on board the RV. Over the years, I've upgraded from a simple outside thermometer to one that also did wind speed to a full-blown Wi-Fi capable unit from Ambient Weather that monitors our rainfall, wind, temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, etc. It sends data via an internet router to an online web page to share and keep track of our weather history. Anne likes to wake up, grab her phone, and check our RV weather report of current conditions outside. Let's her know if it's worthwhile getting up or rolling back over for more shut eye. During this winter stuck in Canada, it's also proved useful monitoring how cold we're getting, so I know if I need to take action to prevent freeze ups. Wi Fi booster router. <clears throat> we spent at least we spend at least four to five months most years camped at a favorite Vancouver Island location in the summertime. This location has several Wi-Fi options, including a free citywide hotspot, but it's a fair distance away. Our larger devices like my 17-inch laptop and Anne's iMac can get, can get a log on and okay speeds, but our phones, tablets, and smart TV can't. However, we have the WineGuard Connect 2 Wi-Fi booster mounted on the trailer's rooftop. I can log into it I can log on to the free Wi-Fi and reshare the connection inside to all our devices. All the devices then get strong signals and good speeds. Well, that's unless the Wi-Fi source gets overloaded with users. Then, of course, not much can be done about that. We use our Connect2 booster to pick up free Wi-Fi from places like casino parking lots, truck stops, coffee shops, and similar locations as we travel on the road. Furthermore, the model I have has a 4G cell antenna and modem built in. I can insert a SIM card and use it as a data hotspot. The cost depends on your cell plan. Cell booster. I debated putting a cell booster on the must-have list, but Anne and I maintain internet blogs and various video and social media channels, so having an internet connection is somewhat important. Also, cell access is critical for safety when out in the boonies like we often are. However, in the last few years, I found that the carriers have improved coverage so much, at least out west here, that our use of one has dropped dramatically. On our last trip to the southwest, I found we were only ever camped out of cell range a couple of times, and even then, not that far. Nothing a quick 5-10 to 10 minute drive couldn't solve. I find the most significant problem these days isn't weak signals, but oversubscribed cell towers. When a large gathering of RVers shows up in an area, it tends to overwhelm the cell capacity. A booster can't solve that issue. I feel they still have their place though for people who absolutely must get online or camp for long stretches in a fringe area. Wilson Electronics makes several good quality RV cell boosters under the name WeBoost. Over the years, I've reviewed a few different models and they've worked well in some locations to get online or make a call, but don't expect miracles. Tire monitoring system. In my opinion, a definite must have for trailer owners. 
Nothing like the peace of mind knowing the current pressure and temperature of the trailer tires. Trailer tires take a real beating and often suffer blowouts. Many of these catastrophic blowouts can cause thousands of dollars in damage to the trailer's undercarriage and maybe even nearby plumbing and electrical systems. Often a wireless tire monitor system can pick up a failure early, saving a ton in repair costs or even injury or lives from a crash avoided. Other than tires, the TPMS sensors can alert the RVer to other high temperature situations caused by, say, a dragging brake or seized bearing. If these go unnoticed, such failures could quickly lead to fires in a horrible day on the highway. The top brands on the market are Easy Tire, Tire Minder, and TST. Any of these should do a good job. I installed the Easy Tire TPMS a little over three years ago, and so far I'm quite happy with the performance. Last summer I reviewed the Tire Minder i10, and though it worked well, I was not too fond of its display. I found it too reflective in bright light, and I like to closely monitor my trailer tire temps, looking for any increases out of the norm. Battery Jumper Starter Box. Another handy electrical electronic item I carry around for convenience is my NOCO Battery Booster Box. It's one of their higher end models, capable of jump starting up to a 10 liter diesel engine. Even though it can output enough to jump large engines, it's still reasonably small size. Rather than using a heavy lead acid battery, it has a powerful high output lithium pack inside. It also has a 12 volt power socket and USB port to run and charge other items off it. I love the fact that I can quickly help out a fellow motorist get started without risking my expensive diesel truck's electrical system. Rather than the standard jumper cable method, I walk over with my little jumper box and hook it up. The NOCO even has the smarts to only work when hooked up correctly. So far I've helped out at least a half dozen people have a better day. And finally, number 12 on my list is a multimeter. If you plan on testing or troubleshooting repair of electrical items or power circuits in an RV, you'll want one of these. You can save yourself lots of money with a little basic knowledge, even if it's as simple as locating an open fuse. Now you can even get them with the AC-DC clamp meter incorporated for amperage. Here's a post and video I did a few years ago. I'll link to it, how to use a multimeter for RVers. So there you go. There's 12 of my must-have electronic gizmos and gadgets. I have a blog post up. If you want to find links to greater detail, I'll link to that. Till next time, it's Ray from loveyourrv.com. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers, everyone.